In this lesson, we're going to take our block out, add geometry to it, and add modifiers to make the model more smooth. First things first, we're going to start with the arm because we blocked out the shape and we have the placement for the fingers. But now we have to connect the fingers to the hand here. What we're going to do is we go to edit mode, we select, since we can just model this one finger and then duplicate it, we can just delete the other one. So select with L, then delete. And then we go to this one that we're going to go to the wireframe mode. And then here, we select the polygon there. Then we can start modeling it to fit the shape that we have. So maybe extrude this part. And as you can see in the sketch, we have this L-shaped pose for the finger. So maybe we can just extrude this side. So extrude, and then extrude again, so that we have this L-shape. We can actually just select this finger and then rotate it. Just to see how it looks. Also, we can go to the wireframe mode and select this polygon, maybe move it and scale it up. This looks good. And then, of course, we go to edit mode again, select this finger with L, and then shift D for this one, and then shift D for that one. Maybe scale it down a bit. Now that looks good. And we can also do the same for the thumb here. So we just select this polygon, extrude it, and uh, maybe also select the vertices here. Let's go to wireframe mode again. Select this vertex here and then maybe move it. Then we go to strategic preview. So now I want to connect the fingers to the palm here, or like that. And so basically, we're just going to go to edit mode. And as you can see here, if we go to the polygon selection, we select the polygons. We have three polygons for the finger, each finger base. So I want, it, you cannot connect that, I mean you can, but it's better to connect the hand or that part of the hand with the polygons. So we just have this one polygon here. The way to do it is to add edge loops. So control R, edge loops here, maybe increase the number with the scroll wheel, or just press two, and then left click. So now we have three different polygons so we can connect fingers. Let's just piece it again closer to the fingers. And then just closer here. Maybe the placement of the fingers can change. Maybe you can bring up the front of it. And then now we select this polygon and this polygon here. If we want to connect both of them, we can just press Control E which brings the options for the edge selections here. And you have so many options, but the one that we're going to use is bridge edge loops. So it'll get connected. But you can see here it's not getting connected correctly. And I'm glad that happened so I can show you how to fix it. You can just do undo this and then place polygon in another, maybe clear that. Then select again, bridge edge loops, and then it gets connected. You can do the same for the other ones and one other one here. And now we have connected like that. We can do the same for the thumb here. So if we go edit mode again, of course, if you select this polygon, you can see this polygon is huge. So it's better that we use the edge loop function here. So edge loop, we just slide it like so. And then select the polygon, pick this one and the base here then bridge edge loops. So now if you go to the material preview, you can see we have the hand we wanted. Also, this was just a rough block out. We can actually refine the placement of some stuff. So for example, the polygons here, we can just move them a little bit here and then scale them down. So it actually attaches to the body like that. So that looks good. And one other thing is if you press Z, you have different views, like a solid wireframe and material preview. Also, you have the shading for the polygons. So either shade smooth or shade flat. Let's go with shade smooth. And you can see now the smooth shading is nicer. One other thing is the gaps between the fingers. 
we want to reduce those a little bit so you can go to edit mode and then if we go here maybe go to wireframe select the vertex selection and then one way you can also of course select each vertex on its own but also you can press c then you'll have this circular shape on this cursor and you can just hold the left click and then select everything that you want to select and then press escape then you can scale down maybe also bring it down we'll do the same here so it's easier like that uh, we can check the other arm as you can see it's different because we wanted to grip the banana so we can actually just delete this one and then we can do this again but not link duplicate this time just Scale normally, and then we scale it on the x axis by negative one, and then we just rotate it on the y axis. We check the y frame just again, so it can't match us. We need to move the polygons here. Let's check all the views. Oh, yeah, and then we can place the banana where it should be. And then edit the finger so it kind of matches the sketch. So with the thumb here. Also the fingers are a little bit off. So again, we can select with new thing with C. You get the circular shape and then we select all spots that want to move. So go to solid fingers to see. Let's select the fingertips. Then we can grow the selection with Control Plus on the numpad. We'll increase the selection that we have. And then we move them again. Rotate. Also, the fingertips. Maybe we can actually do something about them. Select again and then grow with Control Plus on the numpad. Then move them again. They kind of have a grip on the banana. And also one other thing is you can select the polygons in the palm then we can bring it back a little bit so they don't fit to the banana palm again and then you can move it. I think this is okay for now. And now since we have both arms, you can also rename this to arm R. And now we have both arms with the fingers connected. So what can we do next? If you check the sketch, we have this circular shape. So we can add it to the arms, like the padding here, here, here. So we can add it. If you go to edit mode, move this 3D cursor with shift, right click, and then create a cube. And the cube, the subdivided cube looks like a sphere. So we can just scale it on the X axis. So it has this padding shape. And then we can also add an edge loop so it's more thick in a way, not rounded. And then, of course, we can select it with L, go to the camera view, and then place it in the right spot. This one is here. Then we go to material preview, and then solid view again, just to see. Looks good. Yep. And then, of course, it's here. And we can also create the other one here shoulders, scale it down. And then, of course, this is um, flat shaded. We can make the shading smoother. And then for the padding here, of course, we need to do the same for that arm. So cube, scale it on the x-axis, add an edge loop with control R, and then we select it with L, scale it down, move the sketch, scale it down. First, duplicated shift D. One part near the shoulder, and solid view.
and then of course shade smooth again. So now that we have the arms ready, um, of course we're gonna tweak the shape or and, and maybe polish it a bit uh, later in the lessons. Now we need to move. So for example, the head. If we take the helmet first of all, smooth shading, and then hide the helmet for now with H. With the monkey head, we need to add a lot of details. So first of all, the easiest one will be the eyes. So let's add, add the eyes now. Again, we want the three shirt here. So shift, right click, and then we add a UV sphere. And then with the UV sphere, we can just rotate it on the X axis. Let's get it down. Then we can place the eye the way we want it. We can go to edit mode, so we can duplicate this. We can have both eyes in one object. And then we duplicate the sphere, place it, scale it up and then go to object mode again. Check. He has the crazy eyes, but it's fine. With this, we can get the shading to smooth. Okay, and the head shape here, we can, because it's not following exactly the sketch. Again, it's just a block out, so we need to work on it more. So if we go to edit mode, we can go to the wireframe, then select the polygon here, or the eyebrow part. You can see it's too rounded. Also, it's not following the side, so we can just go to wireframe again. This part a little bit down, scale it a little bit down on the x-axis, and then extrude. So we have this eyebrow part up here, scale it on the x-axis, then extrude again, scale it down, and we can check the solid view. Kind of looks good again too rounded. So, if we want to add more details, just push the roundness a little bit to the side. We can add a edge loop in the middle. So, edge loop kind of reduced the roundness, but also made the chin a bit boxier. So, we have to go to wireframe mode, select the vertices here to fit the sketch so it gets more rounded as well. A little bit better. Also, one other thing this illustration is going to be from just one side, so you don't have to worry about all other angles. But it's better to have a model that looks good from all angles if it's going to be used in a game or something like that. So, I'm going to also add some volume to the face since we already have this edge loop. So, I'm just going to select this all, then select the edge loop. So, it's going to select the whole thing, and then we can actually move it to the front. We add more volume to the face and basically you can actually just select this with L, go back on the Y axis here, I think this is good, and then we can make it smoother. Now we have the rough shape of the head is there, but one other thing, cut the hole for the mouth here. How can we do that? In this lesson I'm just going to do it with the knife tool. I'm just gonna cut through the geometry here and then we can walk the face. We go to edit mode and go to solid. You can see we don't have a lot of geometry to work with. So what if I want to apply, we have the subdivision modifier here that reads the geometry and makes it smoother. What if I want to work, I want to apply this modifier to have these geometry so I can do the mouth and stuff. So the way to do it is to go to object mode. Usually I don't like applying modifiers because it's destructive. You cannot go back and tweak some certain stuff about the modifier, but in this specific case, it's not necessary. So we're gonna apply the modifier to get the increased geometry. You can see that we have this modifier selected with the blue highlight here. If you select it, then press Control A, then go to edit mode. You'll find that we have the increased geometry. Now what we want to do is cut the hole for the mouth. So if we go to wireframe mode and deselect everything with A and then toggle, let's cut the shape here we have. So if we press the K on the keyboard, it's going to bring this uh, knife icon. And then you can see we can just click. It kind of has this magnet effect on edges and vertices, which is good. So it crazy was the cutting. I'm just going to cut, as you can see, I'm just click, click to find whatever 
shape it. I want to put it in the mouth right now, so I've got it here. And then, as you can see, we're done with the shape. If I want to apply it, I just hit space. And now if we go to solid view, you can see we have the geometry here for the mouth ready. Well, the first thing that you're going to think of is, hey, let's extrude it inwards. But it's not that simple. Because if you extrude it inwards like that, you can see you have shading issues here, 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 and here. There are a few ways around that. One way around it is to inset first so you have more geometry on the edges and then extrude inwards so you'll have less shading issues. Still, of course, some shading issues, but less. The way I like to do it, if we're not going to fix the geometry and make it really well, it's not going to be animated anyways right now, it would be just connecting. Like, you don't want to have floating vertices like that one. If I want to connect those two, have an edge between them. I select one, select the other, and then press J. And you can do it with other ones as well, because I feel this is still a little bit flowing. So now we don't have any floating vertices. Maybe that one as well. So now that we connect all vertices like that, it's going to be better. So we can just select the geometry, like the polygons for the mouth. So now we can select the polygons for the mouth and then do the inset thing. So inset, we have more edges. And then extrude inwards. Maybe extrude again and maybe scale it down. That works. Then we can select the polygon here. As you can see, this is just the back of the head popping out from the mouse. We can actually just select the polygon and we can either push it to the back on the y-axis or scale it on the y-axis so it's more flat. We have the mouth for the monkey and I think it's looking better. We also for the back of the head 